Hi everyone, my name's Dana. I'm here with Marlon Nunn and we're talking about her new book, Sugartown Queens, which of course is reversed on this screen, which comes out on the 3rd of August. Welcome, Marla. Thanks for having oh. coming on the YouTube channel today. I always like to start the first question with asking you to tell us a bit about what the book is all about, what Sugartown Queens is about. Sugartown Queens is about uh, three girls who kind of whose friendship becomes more intense when they try when they're solving a mystery uh, so my main character mandla's mother she doesn't know where she comes from she doesn't know anything about her but one day they, she gets a clue and then she starts following that clue to find out where her, who her mother is and her family and her friends sort of join with her and it, it's kind of like i think you would you would call it um it's, it's a little bit of a mystery in terms of finding out what happens to, with the mother, but it's also a lot about what people, especially women and girls can do when they are joined together in a, in a, in a sort of a quest and they all have their own singular kind of power. Mm. So I, I really wanted to avoid any sense that girls are always in competition. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. I think you've really achieved that. That's one of the really strong themes that came out for me was just the strong friendship between Amandla, little bit and goodness, and also the strong women that are really present mm. in the mm. novel, mm. also with Amandla's mother um, and other family members. Yeah, I, that was that was part of it. Is like my sense of my childhood, not my sense, but my memories of my childhood. It, it's all peopled by aunties who I was always slightly scared of, but they were real figures of power in my world. You know, uh, the men were, but they were sort of not central to it the way the women were, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I, you know, I just had aunties that talk about, they had to have their feet on the ground. Yeah. They had to have their feet on the ground. They had to deal with all the things that come your way when you're poor and not white. Mm. And the way they did it sometimes was, was this kind of like um, what New Zealanders will call mana, which is this inner power um, and which can be destroyed but can also be held on to so yeah it was absolutely there was so and I still have aunties like that mm -hmm. that I'm I'm really scared to disappoint <laughs> <laughs> because they'll tell me yeah. when I disappoint them have, have they read the book <laughs> no not yet I'm actually very excited because this book is actually dedicated to one of my aunties mm -hmm. auntie Maureen oh, when I was growing up she was a groovy auntie that would be like on the back of a motorcycle with a mm. boyfriend and she had an afro and I just remember thinking oh my god <laughs> <laughs> maybe one day <laughs> yeah I want to be that <laughs> so I can't wait to give her yeah. a copy of the book I was planning to go to Melbourne in the next week or so to have dinner with her and give her this book but everything's shut down so that'll have to wait mm. well, that's a shame it's a shame because I think the other thing that really struck me yeah is just their groundedness, their sense of their own, um, I don't know, there's a, a strong sense of strength. There's a lot of brokenness and, and I guess, mm -hmm. trauma there. But there's also, a, a, particularly in Amanda's mother, a lot of strength there as well that she has. Yeah. I, I think the way I worked with her was that it's you can be broken, but if there's some point in your life, a strong point in your life where you've been nurtured and loved, then that that is cocooned somewhere in you mm -hmm. and you can find that place so for her it was kind of she was so broken because she could never figure out what that place was but once she kind of is told by she's got something now to hold on to mm -hmm. but yeah there's a lot of I mean that, that's a lot about I think coming from a community where you see all sorts of things I mean I never grew up thinking you know pain would never come my way I was just like oh yeah Mm. Stuff, stuff's gonna happen yeah yeah <laughs> happens to everybody not just you not just your auntie there or anyway but um and Australia has definitely has a sense of um um having the help outside of your family maybe but I still think that the family is a port of call for most people mm -hmm. you know yeah. to find those things yeah 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 I think the other thing that obviously is embedded deep within this novel and also your, your other YA novel, When the Ground is Hard, is that strong sense of racial injustice and, mm -hmm. and you talk about mm -hmm. colour a lot and, um, I mean, Amandla is biracial, so she she never knew her father. 
he is Zulu and her mother is white. And then, you know, when, when the ground is hard, there's this almost this hierarchy in the boarding school based on yes. colour and yeah. whether you're the daughter of a mistress or your parents are married or, or, or things like this. Yeah. So, I mean, it really gave me this strong sense of, um, of that world. But how much of your own experiences have you put into uh, writing about racial oh, injustice? Yeah. Um, so in When the Ground is Hard, which is my first YA, that was just all based on my boarding school mm-hmm. that I went to. And absurdly enough, it was a boarding school that was only for mixed race people. So immediately you're already in a catchment area. It was only for mixed race kids. And then bizarrely, if one of your parents was black, you weren't allowed into the boarding school. Your parent had to be mixed or white and white or too mixed. But this is the, I can't even, I try to explain to people the insanity yeah. of some of these racial laws and things that came through. And it's really hard to, to, to explain it but uh, certainly I was brought up in a place where it wasn't like this is your country these I, I was brought up with this these are your people they're mixed race people other people are not your people at all don't expect anything from them because they will see you for what you are straight away and then they'll know that you you don't belong to them either mm-hmm. so we, we it was always this kind of floating thing from my childhood of being between yeah. you know being between two two major kind of blocks and when I was writing Sugartown Queens, I actually, I thought, come on, come on, just take a look. South Africa's changed. You'll probably find that there's no blocks to racial, interracial relationships. I, I Googled a few things. And I thought, mm, no, no, that's still happening. Mm. And then I went to a wedding in Melbourne where the guy is Zulu and, the, and his wife is white Australian, very blonde, very beautiful, right? Mm. And I said, oh. He went to South Africa three years ago. I think the last time he could actually go. And I said, what's it like? He goes, well, we've been spat at it in supermarkets. Oh, goodness. He said, and the opposite to that is they have people come up to them, white, old white men, women, and they go, thank you. Thank you for being so strong and making a new world. But he was like, it's, it's still pretty rough, especially yeah. when it's a black man with a white woman. Yeah. That, for some reason, really affronts people still. I don't, I'm not sure why. But, oh, it's still there. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's, as much as I wish it was like, oh, in the past. So when I wrote Sugar Town Queens, I was like, oh, no, it's still there. Mm. Mm. That feeling is still there, you know. So, uh, yeah, I, I try not to, I try not to, well, what do you call it? Um, I try not to take a stick to anyone because nobody likes to read books where, they feel they've had a stick taken to them. <laughs> Therefore, they're always good. They're always fantastic black people and terrible white people or fantastic white people and someone who's mixed is not so good because mm. we're all people essentially in the end, you know, and I've, I've never met, I've never thought, oh, white people are terrible or, oh, they're this. I've just never thought that because I'm from such a, a mixed community mm. that you can actually see that everyone's everyone. Yeah, everyone's got a dodgy someone or other in their family. <laughs> you know, it's just human. We're just human. 